Hey there. It's uh, been over a month since the last video. My first excuse is that I've been a bit under the weather the past few weeks, so video production has been going a bit slower than I'd like. My second reason is that last April, I was at the Los Angeles Maker Fair with my robots, so I sort of stopped what I was doing to prepare for that for a few weeks. I built a whole new robot using Endeavor 1's parts. I called this one Contender, which was the same Endeavor 2 design, just with a different color scheme and minor aesthetic adjustments. I also put together a boxing ring for the two robots to fight them in. And the result? Well, I had a lot of fun. For the first half of the day, at least. The second half, Endeavor busted one of its leg servos, so it was unable to move properly without some assistance. And Contender? Well, you could say it didn't make the cut. Anyways, I hope to be back with a better exhibit experience next time. But for now, it's time to continue the development of my 3D printed humanoid robot. Due to the setbacks, this video will only address repairs and design tweaks based on observations from Maker Faire, as well as the beginnings of IMU integration. The next video, I hope to showcase dynamic balancing and things like that. But for now, I hope you enjoyed this shorter video. Okay, so I've gone ahead and taken apart the robot, and right now we're looking at the pelvis assembly. So first we need to replace the left thigh servo, which is this guy right here. Uh, for some reason it seems to be jamming and doesn't really want to move, so I'm going to replace it. We're also going to open this up and see what's wrong inside, so let's get to that. So the good news is that the gear survived. My initial theory was that a heavy impact sheared off one or more of the gear teeth, causing the loose debris to jam the output shaft. I'm glad this wasn't the case because I'd be considering switching to a servo with better build quality. It turns out the issue actually lies in the gear cover piece. The material that's holding down this bushing for the center gear axle is deformed in one direction, and you could kind of see that by the gap. As a result, the rotary axle was probably allowed to wobble, causing the gears to bind and restrict movement. The likely cause may have been impact abuse from falling over too many times, though I'm less worried about this because unlike busted gears, I can repair this by filling the gap left by the deformation with putty or resin, but that will have to wait until later. For now, it's easier to just replace the servo with a spare. So I just got finished rebuilding the pelvis with the new servo swapped in. Now before I put together the rest of the robot, I want to do something else about the ball bracket piece, which is this guy. So the other robot had its torso come loose to the point that the upper and lower halves actually separated. And that made me realize that this design doesn't exactly solve the core issue, which is that it's this small servo disc that's pretty much holding up the entire upper body. Uh, which isn't good. The steel balls only serve to mitigate the symptoms of the screws coming loose. So we need to come up with a new design so that never happens again. So to address this, I designed a new piece to secure the two halves together. So inside is a cross roller bearing, which you can see a bit better in this, uh, in this example. This design came from Christoph Lamer on YouTube, who makes some pretty cool 3D printed stuff which I encourage you to check out if you can. The idea behind the cross roller bearing is to alternate the cylindrical rollers at 90 degree angles, and this allows for the bearing to handle loads and moments in multiple directions unlike traditional ball bearings. So I adapted this design to fit on the pelvis assembly. The centerpiece rotates with the pelvis servo and is fastened to the torso through screws that are now mounted on the bottom. So you can see two here and basically this allows me to separate the upper and lower halves um, if I need to without needing to uh, go into the internal electronics area. So next I'm going to print this and see how it goes.
right, the torso bearing piece has been mounted. Uh, for a rotary mechanism that is completely 3D printed, I'm very impressed. I mean, it works very well, and there's hardly any free movement in any direction. Of course, I need to actually put together the rest of the robot to test its effectiveness, but it's looking good so far, so yeah, very happy with this. With the upper body now mounted, the torso joint rotation still feels smooth and secure, despite the additional mass on top, which I am very satisfied with. But, why stop there? So I made similar bearing pieces for the arm joints that share the same ball support bracket. It adds a bit of length, but it's a trade-off I'm willing to make if it means the joints won't wobble and fall off. I was able to do a few runs with the new joints on Endeavor, and so far so good, though long-term durability is something that is yet to be seen. But for now, these are changes that I'm happy with and willing to include as part of the open source release. With repairs and design improvements out of the way, it's time to work on Endeavor's control system. Currently, Endeavor is very dumb. Executing motion sequences without knowing whether it's upright, laying flat, or about to fall over. I want this robot to be more intelligent with its movements, which is why I am introducing this inertial measurement unit, or IMU, sensor into the electronics. This is the BNO055 from Adafruit, which communicates over I2C and is capable of sensing linear and rotational acceleration, and calculating absolute orientation, among other things. Having the sensor on board will provide some sort of feedback loop so that the robot can properly respond to external forces or changes in balance. My initial plan was to hook this up to the ESP32, but given that Autofruit doesn't recommend it, the sensor handling will be done with the Servo 2040. Unfortunately, Autofruit's drivers to communicate with the sensor are written for Arduino when I need something compatible with the C++ Pico SDK. So using Autofruit's library and another GitHub repository as a reference, I made my own custom library so RP2040-based microcontrollers can talk to the IMU over I2C protocol. Using a Raspberry Pi Pico board with the serial monitor opened, I got it working with a simple polling program that periodically prints the absolute orientation, also known as Euler angles. Next, it was time to integrate the IMU with the Servo 2040. The default I2C port is occupied by the UR transfer and receive wires. However, the secondary I2C port can be accessed through the board's analog 0 and 1 pins. Now the IMU needs a place to stay, so I made a small bracket that goes over the 2040. The sensor is oriented such that the x-axis that is printed on the PCB points to the front of the robot. After that, I need to integrate my custom library into the code I wrote for the 2040 in the previous video. Something I wasn't aware of before was that the RP2040 microcontroller comes equipped with two cores, and up until now everything was running on core 0. Having the sensor processes run on core 1 means that the servo actuation code I wrote previously can be run simultaneously without the two processes affecting each other, which I think is a pretty smart implementation for the servo 2040. On the ESP32 side, I wrote some code to process incoming sensor data from the UR channel. This was also done on the ESP's second core so that the original control system isn't disturbed. To make sure it's working, I wrote a simple print statement loop to check that the pipeline from the IMU to the ESP32 is in working order. Now it's time for Endeavor to actually do something with the sensor data. Starting out small and simple, I decided to consolidate the fall recovery sequence into one button. Previously, I pressed the plus or minus buttons to make the robot get up from a fall, each button corresponding to which direction the robot is facing. With the IMU, I can compare the pitch angle to determine the action sequence to choose, rather than have two buttons. After fall recovery, I want to add fall protection to minimize damage from a fall that is inevitable. If that piece of the leg servo broke due to fall damage, then what if the robot can switch off the servos right before the impact occurs? My reasoning was that without power, the servos would be free rotating, rather than actively trying to resist the forces caused by the impact. This would minimize damage to the internal components of the servos, resulting in less maintenance and increased longevity. Implementing both were quite simple as adding if statements to check the pitch angle. In the case of the consolidated fall recovery button, if the pitch was greater than positive 30 degrees, the robot would run the get up from its back sequence. If the pitch was less than negative 30 degrees, the get up from its front sequence would be used instead. For fall protection, 
if the absolute value of the pitch angle cross a threshold value, the ESP32 would trigger the relay to turn off the power to the servos before the robot hit the ground. Let's see both of these functions in action. First, consolidated fall recovery. Next, fall protection. It may not seem like much, but I'd say these are great quality of life additions for Endeavor. Also, in case you were wondering, the new printed joints are still holding up after the fall protection tests. Ideally, this would have been the point where I'd show my efforts for fall prevention, using the IMU to actively maintain balance using PID control. However, after over a month of no uploads, I kinda just want to get this video out. But I gotta say, it's fun having a project that continuously improves over time. Even if my robots didn't survive the whole day at Maker Faire, I'm using the experience as a way to make something even better. And of course, I'm enjoying working with the electronics and control side of this project. Usually the stuff I did at work was purely mechanical, so being able to think about controls and work with sensors like the IMU are a breath of fresh air. I can't wait to evolve this project even further, and it will start with dynamic balancing in the next video. If you've enjoyed this video, do leave a like and hit the subscribe button to stay up to date. As always, my code base for this project is on GitHub links below, and I'm also looking to publish CAD files sometime within the next few weeks, so you can make your own Endeavor robot. But that's all for now. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.